name's Janelle and in this video I'm going to be sharing my top DIY gift ideas. I think making and giving a handmade gift to someone is such a special thing to do and hopefully the projects I'll be sharing in this video will give you some ideas and inspiration for what you can make your loved ones these holidays. Let's start with these adorable ruffled placemats. For this project, you're going to need a main and contrasting fabric, as well as some wadding or batting material for thickness. Start by cutting a rectangle that's approximately 30 by 45 centimeters or 12 by 17 and three quarter inches out of your wadding material. Then cut two rectangles that are the same size from your main fabric. For the ruffle, cut a rectangle that's approximately 8 cm by 3 meters or 3 inches by 3.5 and yards. And all up, you should have the following pieces. Like me, you may need to cut and stitch a few pieces together to get the 3 meter length for the ruffle, so start by stitching those pieces together. Then with right sides together, stitch the two ends of the 3 meter piece together. Next, with wrong sides together, fold and press the ruffle in half lengthways. I then decided to neaten off the raw edges with my overlocker, but this is completely optional and you can use the zigzag stitch of your sewing machine instead if you'd like. Change the stitch length of your sewing machine to the longest possible setting, and then sew two rows of gathering stitches along the entire raw edge of the ruffle. Pulling on just the two top threads of the ruffle, gently gather the ruffle up until it's approximately the same size as the outside edge of the fabric rectangles. Then give the ruffle a good press with your iron. Place one of the main fabric rectangles onto the wadding and then place the ruffle along the outside edge of the rectangle, making sure that the ruffle is facing towards the center of the rectangle. Then with right sides together, place the other fabric rectangle on top and then pin all the layers together, sandwiching the ruffle into position as you pin. Stitch all of the layers together, leaving a small opening to be able to turn the placemat right side out like this. Trim away the excess fabric and then turn the placemat right side out. Fold the opening that we made before to the inside of the placemat and then give it a good press. and then top stitch along the ruffled edge, stitching the opening closed as you sew. <music> Lastly, remove any exposed gathering stitches with a seam ripper. And your adorable contrasting ruffled placemat is complete. Something else that would actually make a really lovely gift idea is the sponsor of this video, Function of Beauty. Function of Beauty specializes in customizable hair care and beauty products as they know that everyone's hair is unique and so their shampoo should be unique as well. Simply head on over to the Function of Beauty website and take their custom hair care quiz where you can put in your hair history as well as any hair care goals that you'd like to achieve and they will send you a custom shampoo and conditioner that's made just for you. You can even 
pick the scents and the colors as well as customize the bottles of the shampoo and conditioner which is why I think it would make such a fun gift idea. I personally have quite greasy hair and it's also really thin so it gets quite frizzy as well and when I'm buying products off the shelf I find it's really difficult to find something that will manage the frizz without adding extra greasiness. And so being able to select goals that will help with both and create my own customized shampoo was so exciting to me. Since receiving my Function of Beauty shampoo and conditioner, I have pretty much been using them nonstop just because they smell so delicious. But once a week, I do use a purple shampoo for my blonde hair. And on the day I used that shampoo, I was wondering what was wrong with my hair. It was just so frizzy and lifeless. And then I realized I hadn't used my Function of Beauty that day. And I opted for the peach scent, which smells so delicious. And the smell of it actually reminds me of my first ever trip to Japan for some reason, um, which makes it extra special. Now it's easier than ever to try Function of Beauty's top rated signature hair duo, as you can get your first custom formula for under $30 and with free shipping by clicking the link in the description of this video. Thanks Function of Beauty for sponsoring this video and let's get back to the DIYs. Next, let me show you how to make some fabric beeswax wraps. Beeswax wraps are a great alternative to plastic wrap and also are a really great gift idea. All you need to make these is some cotton fabric. It is important that the fabric is 100% natural and some beeswax that has been pre-blended with some tree resin and jojoba oil. I'll leave a link to the pre-blended beeswax I'm using in the description below. You'll also need a pair of pinking shears scissors and I'm using these adorable scalloped edge pinking shears which make the beeswax wraps even more adorable. Start by cutting out your fabric in whatever size you'd like your beeswax wraps to be. And for reference, here are the measurements I use for my wraps. Once you've measured the size of your wrap, cut your fabric out with your pinking shears, remembering to cut the raw edge of the fabric as well, as this will prevent the fabric from fraying once it's been made into the wraps. Next, grate your pre-blended beeswax into small pellets. Cover your ironing board with an old towel and then place a sheet of baking paper over the towel and then lay your cut fabric in the center of your baking paper sheet. Then simply place the grated pellets of wax evenly over the fabric with approximately half a centimeter or one quarter of an inch gap between each pellet. Cover the fabric and the wax with another sheet of baking paper and then carefully start to iron onto the baking paper and as you do so the heat of the iron will begin to melt the wax and should begin to spread all over the fabric. If you notice any parts of the fabric that haven't been covered with wax then simply add more of the wax pellets to the fabric, cover it again with the baking paper and continue to iron it until the fabric is completely covered with wax. And as simple as that your beeswax wraps are complete. To use them, simply use the warmth of your hand to soften the wrap and it will be able to start sticking to itself and to any container you wish to cover. The next gift idea I have to share is an apron. For this project, I'm using some lovely gingham linen fabric, but any mid to heavyweight fabric will work nicely. Using a water erasable pen or some tailor's chalk, mark and cut out a rectangle that's approximately 60 by 75 centimeters or 23 and a half by 29 and a half inches. This will be the main body of the apron. Then mark and cut out two rectangles that are 10 by 90 centimeters or 4 by 35 and a half inches and one rectangle that's 10 by 55 centimeters or 4 and 21 and a half inches. These will be the back ties and the neck strap of the apron. Take the main body piece and fold it in half lengthways. Then along the top of the apron, make a mark approximately 15 centimeters or six inches from the top folded edge. And then make another mark along the side of the apron from the top edge, approximately 30 centimeters or 12 inches in. Then mark out a curved line from these two markings like this. Cut along the curved line to create the underarm part of the apron. And you should now have something that looks like this. Take the two longer strap rectangles and fold and press one of the shorter ends in by one centimeter or half an inch. Then fold and press the strap in half to create a center crease. 
Then fold and press the raw edges of the strap to the center crease. And then fold and press in half once more. Do the exact same for the next strap, but this time don't worry about folding and pressing in the shorter end. Stitch all the folded edges of all the straps in place. underarm edge of the apron by folding and pressing in by about one centimeter or half an inch twice. Then stitch the folded edge in place. Next, hem the top edge of the apron, but before stitching it in place, place the two ends of the neck strap into the folded fabric. Then stitch the hem in place, securing the strap into position as you sew. I then decided to top stitch along the top edge of the apron just to give the neck strap a little bit more strength. Then hem the sides of the apron and again before stitching, place the raw ends of the straps we made earlier into the folded fabric. Then stitch the hem in place, securing the straps as you sew. Then hem the bottom edge of the apron. You can leave the apron as it is now, but let me quickly show you how to add a pocket. For the pocket, cut out a rectangle that's approximately 30 by 40 centimeters or 12 by 15 and three quarter inches. Then hem the top edge of the pocket by folding and pressing in by about one centimeter or half an inch twice. Then stitch the hem in place. Next, hem the other three edges of the pocket. Then place the pocket onto the front of the apron, approximately nine centimeters or three and a half inches from the side edge and 11 centimeters or four and a half inches from the bottom edge. Then stitch the pocket in place along the three hemmed edges, sewing a little triangle into the corner like this for a little bit of added strength. And your amazing handmade apron is complete. Next, let me show you how to make some mini scrunchies. Basically, these scrunchies are just a smaller and thinner version of the traditional scrunchie. Start by cutting a 90 by seven centimeter or 35 and a half by two and three quarter inch rectangle out of your fabric. Then fold and press the longer edges of the rectangle in by about one centimeter or half an inch. Next, with right sides together, stitch the two ends of the rectangle together like this. Then press the seam open and with wrong sides together, fold and press the rectangle in half lengthways, enclosing the raw edges of the fabric on the inside. Then stitch the folded edges together, leaving a small opening to be able to thread some elastic into. Next, take some thin elastic and measure out a piece that is approximately 25 centimeters or 10 inches. Then using a bodkin or a safety pin, thread the elastic into the casing of the fabric through the small opening. Once thread all the way through, tie the two ends of elastic together into a double knot and then sew the opening closed. And your mini scrunchies are complete. The last gift idea I have to share with you are some handmade buttons. For this project, you'll need some fabric scraps 
and a button covering kit which you should be able to pick up from most craft stores. In the kit I'm using, the red piece is known as the holder and the yellow piece is the pusher. Start by cutting a square piece of fabric that's slightly bigger than the button you'd like to cover. Then lie the fabric square right side down onto the button holder. Place the button shell onto the pusher and push the fabric and the button shell into the holder. Trim away the excess fabric and then remove the pusher. Fold the remaining fabric into the button shell and then use the pusher to secure the button back in place. Then pop out your little fabric covered button. Repeat this process until you have a set of handmade buttons. To go along with this gift idea, I've made some free button cards that you can download using the link in the description of this video. To use them, simply print them onto some card paper and then stitch the buttons onto the card. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that it's given you some fun ideas to make for your loved ones this holiday season. If you do have a go at making any of the projects I've shared in this video, then I would love to see them. So be sure to tag me at Rosary Apparel when you share your photos on Instagram. And make sure you subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more sewing and DIY videos like this one. Thanks for watching.